Hello and welcome to the series of Rapid Minor Videos. My name is Dr. Marcus Hoffman and I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Technology Blanchardstown and also the principal investigator of this project funded by the Irish National Digital Learning Repository. The series of Rapid Minor Videos was created in close collaboration with Ralph Klinkenberg and Dr. Ingo Merswa, the two founding members of Rapid Minor. More videos as well as additional material to some videos can be found at www.rapidminorresources.com. I would now like to introduce Ralph Klinkenberg who will talk you through this tutorial. Sometimes the data types of a dataset do not perfectly match the modeling technique that you would like to use. For example, some symbolic rule learners require nominal attributes and cannot handle numeric ones. Some numeric learners like linear regression or support vector machines require numerical attributes and cannot handle nominal ones. And some learners like decision tree Decision trees can handle both nominal and numerical attributes. Similarly, for the label, some techniques can only handle classification, that is nominal labels, while others can only handle regression, that is numerical labels, while others can actually handle both, like support vector machines. So, let's just pick some data set and the learner and see how we can make, make things match. So let's assume we would like to predict how likely it is that some but he will have a wage increase in the next year, given some information about wage increases in previous years and some other attributes with a wild mixture of numerical and nominal attributes. And if we now would like to use, for example, a, um, some learning technique to learn a model to predict this, we could go to modeling, select, for example, a decision tree, add the decision tree here, run the process and see the decision tree can actually handle nominal labels and can handle both numerical attributes like statue or holidays as well as nominal attributes like long-term disability assistance. Missing values are not treated so nicely so maybe missing values should first be replaced before you learn a tree. So that would be one way of making things fit. Replace missing values could be one thing to prepare the data better for a learner. And we could say, well, replace all missing values by the average for numerical attributes or the most frequent one for normal attributes. And this would make the tree more reasonable. And you can see both numerical attributes as well as normal attributes can be handled and the width of the bar indicates how many cases are covered, in this case 27 cases, and the coloring indicates a class distribution, two bad cases that is blue, and 25 good cases in red. The narrower bars cover fewer examples, so here only two, and the coloring again displays the class distribution. So for a decision tree this would match now, what about a different learner? If you take another learner, Let's say we would like to take a numerical learner, like a support vector machine. How could we proceed with that? Well, missing value replenishment is a good start, but it may not be enough. So what else may we need? Well, if we're not sure, there is a warning and maybe the problem indicates what's wrong. Okay. We cannot handle polynomial attributes with a support vector machine, only binomial ones. That is, we cannot handle polynomial labels. So if the label has more than two values, that's a problem. Is that really the case? Well, we would have to check. Let's just place a breakpoint here. No, it's only two class labels, so it should be no problem. But there's some other issue. So if you press F1, you see that support vector machines can handle numerical attributes, but they cannot handle nominal or polynomial attributes. So we have to do something with the, numeric, with the non numerical attributes. Of course, you could just filter them out. So let's just do that. Look for a filter. Or more precisely, a select statement. For example, saying, I only want to keep numeric attributes 
or a subset that I explicitly select. I could say, well, I only keep those that I know that are numerical. That could be a way how you could proceed. And remove all the nominal attributes. However, this is not the smartest way to go. What else could we do? We could transform the nominal attributes into something numerical. So we could, for example, use nominal to numerical. And this would help to solve the problem. Now you can see that um, the model could be learned. You see a ranking of the attributes. Like the most important indicators are the wage increases in the past. Negative indicators are working hours and vacation and the duration of the whole job employment. So this is the most positive influencers and the most negative influencers. So to sum up, we replaced missing values, we transformed nominal to numeric and the problem was solved. So how does nominal to numeric work? For our nominal attributes, with for example the values red, green and blue, it has an internal index and they would say red corresponds to 1, blue corresponds to 2 and green corresponds to 3 for example and it would just replace the nominal value by the index. That's an easy way and works for all nominal attributes. It's just one treatment and everything is solved. However, sometimes that may not be the best representation. Let's imagine that you have cities represented as nominal values. The city of your location, like where do you live? New York, San Francisco, Rome, Paris, Helsinki, Stockholm. And now if you have indices like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, some numbers are closer to each other than others and that would imply some similarities that shouldn't be there in the extent that they are there. So sometimes it's better to do a different transformation, to first transform the nominal attributes to binomial and then transform the binomial to numeric. What's the difference? Well, Let's just place a breakpoint after the data preprocessing, or even better, let's just pass the result as an uh, the example set as a result, and we will also see the result in detail at the end. So you can see here now that, for example, this particular contribution to dental plan is a symbolic attribute with nominal values like none, half, full. And this has been transformed to binomial and then to numeric. Same here for um, this attribute or this one. Numerical of attributes, of course, stay numerical. At the end, they all are numerical, and the SVM model can be generated again. Looking at the weights, now, of course, you can have a more differentiated view on the attributes like vacation generous is a positive indicator while vacation below average is a negative indicator. So this was how to do data preprocessing in a way to make data fit to a learner. I just showed you an example how to handle data for a numeric learner. The other way does of course work similarly instead of going from nominal uh, from numer nominal to numerical, you can of course also go from numerical to nominal data. Keywords there are, for example, discretization and um, related issues. Thank you very much for your attention. For further information on RapidMiner, please go to www.rapidminerresources.com or www.rapid-i.com. If you are interested in upskilling, please go to www.itb.ie where you will find more information about our distance learning MSc in Computing Science, in Business Intelligence and Data Mining. Many thanks to the Irish National Digital Learning Repository for funding this video.